What is significant about this particular launch? Hi, Emily. Yeah, that's exactly right. This particular launch is exciting for a few reasons. One, um, it carried two of their um, of the test satellites for their new mega constellation. Um, it's going to have 4,000 plus satellites um, uh, delivering communications. Uh, to the Earth, and so this is important for a few reasons. One, it's going to connect uh, the other three billion, like you mentioned. Uh, it's going to give people um, options to their current cable providers, um, and uh, and most importantly, SpaceX is still going to Mars. So this is going to be a key piece in their financial architecture that's going to get them there. Talking about this effort to bring internet access, fast internet access to the farthest corners of the world, this is something that other, you know, internet entrepreneurs haven't shied away from, like Mark Zuckerberg with internet.org, Google has Project Loon. How is what Elon Musk is doing different? Satellites provide um, an alternative and a way to deliver this, um, these communication services um, that, that, are, that go beyond um, the, the UAV-based and balloon-based things that we've seen previously. So um, typically these uh, communication satellites are in geostationary orbit that's very high up over a particular point on Earth. Um, these 4,000 satellites are going to be much closer to the Earth. Um, and which, which gives you um, a, a smaller distance that the signal needs to carry. And so this is going to be um, uh, incredibly fast broadband connection to the farthest reaches of the planet, um, on par with uh, new communications innovations coming online like 5G. Each of these launches, uh, you know, also there are new learnings and progress when it comes to rocket reusability. What did we see happen here today? Yeah, so this was um, very cool to see. Um, SpaceX just continues to uh, push boundaries and keep us all interested, right? Um, even in the shuttle and Apollo years, we saw viewership start to fall off, and it's because people really want to see what's coming next, what progress are we making, what are we doing next, and SpaceX just continues to push the envelope. Uh, today, the fairings um, that shield uh, the payload, the, sat the satellites, um, came back to Earth and they attempted to catch them with a giant net um, on a boat. And while they missed, they came really close and it seems like they've got um, uh, a good plan to catch them next time. All right. You were also at the National Space Council meeting. I know they talked about space entre entrepreneurship and there's a move towards uh, the fu future of space travel as a commercial uh, rather than a government endeavor. You know, what kind of progress are you seeing there? That's exactly right. And so um, it was good to be in the room uh, yesterday to hear the conversations. Um, and it's really good to hear the emphasis on streamlining regulation and licensing. Um, they've moved a lot of uh, space operations and space oversight into the Department of Commerce, um, which, in a, which is another key signal that um, the future of space is commercial. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the over the overarching focus in that meeting was really about space entrepreneurship and how the government can can continue to partner with them as a customer of services rather than a benefactor or um, uh, funding the development of new systems. What is the mood given the messaging coming from President Trump about <laughs> turning space into the next free market paradise? Well, we're certainly all been working towards that for the last few years, so it's it's good to hear. Um, uh, the government getting on board with that message and I think uh, the data is starting to um, uh, back up the the story here in a in a in a major way and um, we've kind of reached a tipping point where um, uh, the government's really started to, to sit up and pay attention and what are you know we've talked about this in the past but as space becomes um, more commercial what are the sort of safety concerns, the regulatory concerns that you expect to see pop up? Well, there's a great one with uh, the SpaceX launch today that we can talk about. I mean, they've got three key challenges. One is um, the FCC licenses for Spectrum. Uh, it's a scarce resource and how you um, uh, send radio frequency um, down, down to Earth. And then how you bring this, this unprecedented amount of data back down to Earth. And then also, um, uh, how do you navigate the ever increasingly crowded highways in space, right? Uh, space is very big, but um, a, a lot of the uh, key orbits are in demand. And so how do you uh, monitor all these things? They, 
they provide a lot of opportunities for startups, and we're seeing um, startups addressing each one of these concerns with laser communications to bypass uh, the radio frequency spectrum, um, new ground stations that are allowing you to steer them electronically. You can do them for uh, much smaller and much less upfront cost. Um, and in debris tracking, we're seeing um, uh, companies come in and really do this um, uh, in a way that we've never seen before and at a cost point that we've never seen before, being able to track two centimeter objects and, and really uh, give us a lot more situational awareness in space.